I know, Ricardo, you were also talking about the Green Fund and saying that you know only NGOs have access to it. And, and uh, you were saying to me, Richard, that you think that other people should also have access to the Green Fund. How does it work, Ricardo? In terms of the Green Fund, well, um, companies come together with a plan and they bring their plan forward basically to, to, to the authority who is managing the fund. And um, based on the needs and necessities, they are given the money to, to, to fund these projects. Um, one example is the Plastic Keep program that we see running. It is being funded by the Green Fund program. And basically, the founder of the program, uh, Ms. Rosanna Farmer, um, put the entire plan together of how they are going to collect these plastics and stuff and went to the organization and was granted the funds for this. Unfortunately, the problem is only localized to the Dago Martin area and it doesn't serve the entire country, which is some of the sh shortfalls and something we need to get acting and working on. Richard, I see you nodding. I think you've uh, stumbled against it as well and you've tried to access the fund. Well, not really stumbled against it. I, I went and inquired and had some meetings with them to understand what was the process. And um, because there is a fund there that you know is quite sizable, and, and, and the intention of it is exactly what we're talking about here. Um, they have some, some, some unusual requirements to access the fund, which were well intended and, and well thought out, but it created a bit of a problem. Because the, the problem being that one of the requirements, if I'm not mistaken, and maybe they should clarify that in, in due course, is that a commercial company, a registered company, cannot access the fund. It has to be an NGO or a CBO, a community-based organization, um, which has its benefits. The, the ironic problem is that very often the NGOs and CBOs don't have the wherewithal to put together a commercial business plan and the commercial acumen to bring forward the plan in that form, whereas a commercial company would. So you're going to find that to really access the fund, there's going to have to be a marriage of the two, of CBOs working together with commercial entities and commercial, commercially experienced people to be able to present it in the way um, that the fund can make itself available. Okay, well, I guess you'll have to lobby for that. We'll take a short break. Once again, we remind you to send in your comments and photographs to cleaning up the mess at guardian.co.tt. We'll be right back with more on this environmental series on CNC3. Welcome back to the final segment of Cleaning Up the Mess. This is CNC3. Today we're talking about recycling with guests Christian Cannell, Managing Director of Resin Converters Limited, Ricardo Gay, the Managing Director of Technical Systems Limited, and Richard Tang, a management consultant. Richard, let's talk a, a little bit about how we can move forward. Waste management is big in China, importing and exporting waste. How can we reach those economies of scale here? How can it become feasible here? It's a process that we're, we're on the way to. Um, and I think discussions like this, forums like this, are the things that are going to help it. There is a growing awareness and a desire to see it happen. And I think that's one of the very first steps. As Christian said, that needs to be facilitated by government programs that, that facilitate it. There are many people like yourself who, you know, what can I do? What can I personally do? I'll go and collect you know, four garbage bags a week of, of plastic bottles. What do I do with them? And I can tell you there's some families I know that do it, and then there's a bin in their neighborhood today, and they go back tomorrow with their four bags, and the bin is gone, and they become disheartened. What do I do with the four bags now? There needs to be continuity. There needs to be a comprehensive program that steps right through so that when the desire is there and somebody starts the action, that there's follow through to take it to, to the commercial aspect where people like Christian can now say, right, I have a an aggregate, a set of bottles here that I can use to do something with. He can't do his process unless they're the bottles. And the people who are using the bottles can't get rid of them unless there's somebody to collect them. So each of those steps we can individually look at and say, is there an opportunity here for me? Is there something I want to do either on a personal, social level, or is there even a business opportunity in it? Do you think that we should go the way of, um, of 
the bottle bill, for instance, um, I believe that it was stalled partially because manufacturers, perhaps such as yourself, didn't want to pay the extra 15 or 20 cents per bottle in order to allow that recycling. Where do you stand on that? I don't believe uh, the bottle bill in isolation is going to work. I do believe that it can contribute, it can fund. Uh, I do feel that we have funds already in the, in the Green Fund, and that's what we should be using. But taxing the producer or the retailer of the bottles uh, a sum does not solve the problem. You've got to have the collection, and you've got to have the rework system. And this, to me, is more important to get in place before we bring any taxation on and, and just in, in increased cost. Uh, I just don't see that as the best first move. I think the collection system and the reworking system has to be put in place or has to be started before you go to do anything in taxation. And when, once everything is put in place, presumably you won't mind paying that extra 15 cents per bottle? I have no um, recourse on that, I would certainly say, by all means. Yes. If that's what it needs to fund it, by all means. Ricardo, what's your take on the bottle fund? Well, the, the, the bottle bill, um, definitely, I think, um, having something or adding a value to the bottle definitely would make people, just as we'd see with the glass bottle, yeah, the glass bottle is not something to throw and simply thrown away. People understand that there is a value to these bottles, so they collect them. Um, if you take the example of Barbados, for instance, they have a plastic program, and you don't see plastics laying around simply because people understand and know that they can fill a Coca's bag of plastic bottle and take it to X, Y, and Z place, and they receive whether it's ten dollars or twenty dollars for that bag. So, um, again, money is the motivator in, in, in making people do 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 the correct things, and. Um, I think even without government regulations, as we see with Brazil, Brazil has one of the highest rates in terms of recycling cans, something like 96 point something percent, which is above and beyond most of these bigger countries, European countries and stuff. And they don't have very much laws in place. In fact, they have had laws on the table for 20 years. Yeah, but through government incentives and, of course, people understanding that there is an economy and something that can be, be achieved here, people have got up and actually started the industry themselves without waiting on the government laws. And they have achieved great benefits with a 96 point. So 3%, I believe it is, recycling rate for cans. That's, 